Hi, I'm Andrew with VADA and today I'm going to be going over our 2365 and 2366 models. These are our advanced venipuncture models and today I'm going to go over a couple of different things on them. The first one is how do you set up the model and get it ready for use. The second thing is going to be kind of the different things on the model, how you can use it, uh, the features on it, replacement parts. And then the last thing I'm going to go over is kind of the frequently asked questions and the care of the model because that's things that we get people asking us quite often. So. To start off, we already have our 2366 opened up. That's as far as it's gotten. But with our 2365 here, I'm gonna go all the way through the process, getting it ready for use so you can see it in real time. So when the model gets to you, it's gonna come just like this. You're gonna open it up. By opening it up, you're just gonna push in on the end here. There's a snap feature. Open it up until you hear the click. And then once it's open, you're gonna find some tape on here. That's just in there for shipping to hold it in place as we know that sometimes the shipping process can get a little rough and that can dislodge it. So to use it, you're just gonna remove that tape. And then as you look at the model here, you're gonna see the blood bag on this side. The tube's gonna run into the model and then it's gonna exit on this side here to this bubble trap. So the next thing you wanna do is just remove the cap off that bubble trap. And then the last thing you wanna do is take this stopcock that's turned horizontally here and just switch that to the vertical orientation. As soon as I do that, you should see blood come through the stopcock, through these connectors and enter into the vein. Once it does, it's gonna go through all four of the veins. I'll go over more of that in just a little bit, but it's all one continuous vein. And then we're gonna see it come up here and that's when it's gonna be full and ready to use. So again, I'm gonna turn that. As soon as I turn that, you should see the fluid going through. If it doesn't start to go through right away, and this is usually gonna be after you've used it at least once, that's usually gonna be there's a little air bubble in the, the vein somewhere. If that does happen, just give the blood bag a quick little push, that's all you need to do, and that should be enough to overcome it. Again, the fluid's gonna fill, it's gonna take maybe 30 seconds for it to fill up, and again, once you can see it right up over here, that means it's gonna be ready to use. So we just saw the blood come up, and it's just gonna be in the bottom of the bubble trap. It's not gonna fill this up, it's just gonna be at the base. As soon as you see that, the model's ready to go. So starting off, that's gonna be one of the big things that people really like on this model, how quick and easy it is to set up. We just did that um, in real time, that was maybe a minute, and it's ready to go. So now that the model's ready to go, um, you can do a couple of things with this. One is you can leave this uh, open, you can also close this if you'd like, um, either way, it's not gonna really matter, but uh, we'll definitely keep it open for the demo. On the model, like I said, there's gonna be four different veins going through the model. So again, a, something on here that people really like is the ability to not only have multiple veins, that's gonna extend the life of the model, but there's different size vessels in, in here. So starting on this side here, we're gonna have our small vein. It's about a 1.3 millimeter ID. Going to our second vein here, this is our medium vein. This one here is about 2.3 millimeter ID. And then we have two different large veins. Um, this vein here is a little bit more superficial, a little bit more pronounced, really easy to see. This one here, it's just slightly deeper. You can still see it and you can still feel it and palpate it very easily. These veins here are just over four. They're about 4.3 millimeters in size. All of those dimensions are gonna be right down here. So each one of the veins, the size is actually gonna be shown here as well as the actual size. Uh, measurement of it. So once you have the model ready to go, you have fluid running through it, you can access any of these veins and you can get a blood return. And what's nice again is that you don't have just the one size vein. So there's a lot of models out there to practice starting an IV or doing a blood draw and they're gonna have one size throughout the entire model. It's usually a larger size and it's usually gonna be fairly easy to access. What's nice on here is that you can start with this vein right here. This is gonna be the easiest vein. It's the most superficial and it's the large vein. This is the vein that when I talk to people, I say, this is a vein that my friends could hit that have no idea how to start an IV. And that's very true. But the biggest thing we wanna do with this vein is make sure they're doing it the correct way. So if I'm the one learning, people that are watching me, my instructor and the things they can watch um, to make sure that I'm doing them correctly are things like, am I, going with the, uh, the bevel in the right orientation? Am I going at the right angle? Am I going in at the right speed to prevent going through the backside of the vein or to prevent running out of needle um, length if I'm going in too shallow? All of those things you can do on here and as I'm doing it, 
I can be given feedback and somebody can say, Andrew, you're not doing that correctly or try doing it this. I can also practice technique on how I'm gonna advance the catheter into the vein once I've accessed the vein. All of those things I can do on here, I can try them over and over again, get kind of a little bit more confidence and a little bit more proficient in it. And then as I progress in my skill, I can go from this very large vein down to the small vein, which when you look at the actual model, it does look large. But again, like I said before, it is pretty small. So if you go in too steep or too fast, you're gonna go right through the vessel and you're gonna go right through the back wall. Um, you're not gonna get a blood return. You're not gonna get a successful access. So what's really nice is that you can practice five times, 10 times, 20 times, whatever you need personally in order to get that skill or whatever your students need in order to get that skill. What I was just saying is really for people that are new that haven't started IVs, and that is kind of our target audience on this model. But another group that we see that are using this model a lot, and we talk to them at shows, um, conferences, are experienced nurses. And experienced nurses are gonna be using this for two different reasons that we've heard. The, big, the first one is gonna be, maybe they haven't started an IV in a while. Maybe they've been working in an area of a hospital or a care facility where starting an IV isn't part of their day-to-day -day, um, duties. And now they're transferring to some place where they're gonna be asked to start more IVs and they just wanna kind of brush up on their skills. Something that they maybe haven't done in a year or five years, 10 years, whatever it might be. The other thing can be is for people that do start IVs a lot and maybe their facility is switching to a new product. Again, so much of what nurses are doing is gonna be muscle memory, that as soon as you transfer to a new product, that product's gonna be different. How do you hold it? How do you advance the catheter? What does it feel like? So again, they might know how to do it, but this just gives them the ability to practice, feel that confidence, try out a couple of different techniques, maybe with a new product, so that when they go out and they're accessing on a patient, they're more prepared, and again, they're more confident and ready to go. Um, as far as putting the model away, so after you've used the model, um, first thing you wanna do, clean the model off if it's dirty. Um, again, if people's hands or you've got adhesive on it, give it a good wipe. That can be rubbing alcohol. That is a great um, cleaner for it. The other thing would be is using something like a Goo Gone. Um, we do have some of that here. If you haven't seen that, there's Goo Gone, there's Goof Off, there's several different things. They're kind of all the same basic product. Those can be useful as well. They're not gonna damage the product. Um, after you've gotten it clean on this material, you're gonna wanna let it dry really well, make sure it's completely dry, and then apply some baby powder or cornstarch talc or any of those similar products to it and just brush off the excess. That's gonna leave the surface with a nice clean fin um, feeling, it's gonna feel soft, and it's gonna prevent it from getting dirty in the future. Now, just like we did when we went to set up the model, I wanna take the model down and show you how to drain it. So what you're gonna do is put your finger underneath the connector there, you're gonna pull it out, you're gonna hear that snap. On the top here, there's a hook. So we're just gonna pull the bag off of that. And then as soon as we drop this down onto the table, you're gonna see the blood immediately come out of there. So all this is just gonna happen by gravity. It's, it's coming down there and it's gonna to start to empty and go back into the bag. That's all you should have to do. Again, this process will take maybe 30 seconds and then the model will be completely drained. On the side here, we're gonna see that clear connection, that stopcock where the fluid entered into the model. As soon as that goes clear, the model is gonna be completely drained and ready to put away. We do recommend draining the model after each use for a couple of reasons. The biggest thing is gonna be, if you do access a lot, it just gives the model a chance to dry out and the material to kind of stick back together so that you don't have any leaks that are persistent. And also, if you have been accessing um, and there are a bunch of holes in there, the last thing you want to do is have the chance of leaking during storage. So as the model's going down here, this should go clear. If it doesn't go clear, sometimes you will have to lift the model a couple inches off the ground just to get that last little bit of blood out of the model. So we'll go ahead and do that right here. We'll kind of just lift it up for a second. I'll get my finger out of the way so you guys can see. And there we go. Now, now that it's completely drained, we're gonna turn the stopcock to close that bag back off. Place it onto that hook, snap it in there really well, take our cap, put it back onto the stopcock, and then you're just gonna close it. Now the model is ready for storage. So again, just like with the setup, you can see that, that, that closing the model and putting it away for storage is gonna take maybe a minute um, maybe less depending on how much fluid is in there. So it's gonna be really, really easy to do. 
Now that we've kind of gone through how you use the model, some of the questions that we get a lot on this model is, um, the biggest one is definitely how many times can we access the model before the skin and veins are gonna to need to be replaced. Um, for this model here, using a 20 gauge needle, um, you can access it up to 3,600 or more times. Um, we've definitely seen customers get more out of it, but that's a pretty safe number and a pretty safe estimate. Can you use smaller, big, bigger needles? Yes. We do have a couple of customers that buy quite a few of these and they only tell their people to use 22 gauge on here because they wanna make the life even longer. And we do have some people that are emergency medicine or, or other specialties that need larger needles. And I have seen people use up to a 16 gauge on this. If you're doing that, it's definitely gonna decrease the life of the model, but it can be used. Um, but again, just know that use estimate that I gave you earlier won't apply as soon as you start using those bigger needles but you can use all of those on here. Um, another one is, is this model ultrasoundable? No, it is not. You cannot use ultrasound on this. We will go over some of our ultrasound models uh, in another section on our website. You can search for our ultrasound models on there and you'll see a few different options. Um, the next one is, what do you do when this is used up and, and needs to be replaced? You can do two things. Some people just buy a new model. Sometimes that's easier for them. What we would recommend though, is to buy the skin and vein replacement. So for the light and the dark model, um, you can buy the 2381 for this light model and the 2382 for the dark model. Both of those are gonna be replacement parts. When you get that, it's gonna have a skin and vein together and it's gonna come with a little tube of glue. What's nice about that is after you've done it, it's a maybe five minute process to replace the skin and veins and you're gonna save quite a bit over buying a new model. We do also have a video on the product pages for both of these models showing you that process. So if you wanna look at that ahead of time, you can do that. And then after you buy the replacement parts, you can definitely use that as a reference going forward. Um, other thing would be is, are other parts replaceable on the model? Yes, everything can be replaced. So not only does the skin and the veins need to be replaced, and again, that is one part, just so there's no confusion on that. The blood bag, that will need to be replaced occasionally. Um, usually what we see on that one there is the model has been um, stored for a really long period of time, three to six months usually, and mold has grown in it. So um, you can replace that. And again, that will be on the website under the replacement parts. But if you do need to replace that, go on there. If you want to avoid having a, a mold issue on the model, the best thing you can do is use it frequently. And if you are gonna store it for a long period of time, flush the model. A um, Couple of things you can use to flush it. Saline is a great option. Um, to flush the veins through and just make sure everything's cleaned out. Distilled water or even um, a little bit of alcohol in water can be used as a flush to keep it clean. Other than that, I think the big thing that we see people using this for is gonna be, like I said, getting that basic skill, but they're also gonna be doing two things with this as far as how it works with other models. So we've seen customers where they've gotten rid of, of the full length arms in favor of this, and they've done that for two reasons. One is gonna be the price point. These are gonna be significantly less expensive than the full arms. And then the second thing you kind of saw in the video, these are gonna be much easier to set up and get up and running. So there's no additional parts you need to go get. You can go grab these, and whether you're gonna set up one of them or 20 of them, you can get all those set up in maybe 15 minutes or less. And that can be a huge time saver for people. And then the last thing on this is gonna be the durability. They're gonna hold up to needle sticks so much better than most of the arms out there. A lot of them are gonna show track marks in the areas where you're accessing pretty quickly, which again, that's not gonna give you the best simulation. And um, so with these, you're gonna avoid a lot of those problems. The other thing we see a lot of people using these for actually is in conjunction with the full arms. And so what those customers are typically doing is they're gonna get the bulk of their accessing on this model here. Like I said before, it's gonna hold up to needle sticks better and then it's a lower price point. So you're gonna use the model that is gonna last a little bit longer for the bulk of the sticks. And then you're gonna do the final kind of check off or the final um, training on the IV arm where maybe you can get the anatomical locations, you can practice putting a tourniquet on, you can do those different things. So again, whether you wanna to switch to these or use these in conjunction for, with IV arms, they are a great option. They have a lot of really, really nice features that people are loving and it's a great model for practicing starting an IV. If you have any questions on either one of these models, you'll have more information on our website or feel free to reach out to us with any of your questions and we'll be happy to answer them for you. Thank you.